this gap to the gap. So, hi, um, Kabwe Ben and I. Um, Kabwe and I are friends. Uh, we've been friends for some years now. And I first met Kabwe when I was living in Canada. And uh, she uh, was leading a women's Bible study group. And that was during COVID. And uh, so we were online. And then we, uh, we went uh, live at Smythe Street Church in Fredericton in, in uh, New Brunswick, Canada. And that group has just grown and grown. And uh, it was it became something that I had never, ever experienced before. Mm -hmm. um, just women supporting one another, women loving God, loving each other and supporting one another deep in faith and um, doing everything they could. And this is this is Cabway who has started this from a, a little online group to uh, well you can talk to me Cabway because I've been about how it's developed continued to develop because I've been uh, away now for nearly a year so I know it's it's gone from strength to strength when I left I think we were averaging 20 to 25 maybe yeah yeah okay well Cabway's um going to talk to us about the group and what you're doing now and how it's continued to grow so the group started um, in 2018, March of 2018, and uh, we started started really, I would say, from from scratch as a women's Bible study. The one that I had existed before uh, was women with uh, young children, a mom to mom group. So this was, so to say, maybe I'd say a brand new group which started. So when I started the group, I what I had in my pocket was my zeal for the Lord and my love for the word and sharing the word with others. I didn't have, you know, experience leading any such group before. So with that, we started there were a few of us who came together and um, we used to meet every Tuesday, every Tuesday morning. And I would go there and I was using DVD studies and, you know, other Bible study aids. But eventually it got to a place where I felt the Lord was telling me to leave those DVD studies aside and just get into the word, just the word itself. And that's all. That's how we started. And that was um, that's something that stretched me because now I, I had nothing to fall back on except the word. But it grew me in ways that I never imagined because now as just the word, the Holy Spirit and the women as well, and we, I got them to a place where um, this is all we're going to do. We're just going to use the word, and we're going to allow the Holy Spirit to speak to us himself directly through the word. So we started doing that, and and the group was, we had a steady, a steady 10, I would say, from the number, the first meeting we had, we probably had about 20. Then it thinned out to about a steady 8 to 10 for a while. And then the pandemic hit, but we continued meeting. We continued meeting online. And one thing uh, the Lord taught me right from the get-go is kept on reminding me, keep your eyes on the goal. Why is it that you're coming together? You're coming together to strengthen one another, to go deeper in, in your relationship with me. And I think that was always at the back of my mind. And I remember when I started to ask the Lord, I said, Lord, I don't know how to do this. I need help. And he said to me, I will help you. And I said, well, I need, I know you help me, but I need practical help. You know. And he said to me, I will help you and I will send you helpers. And God has been faithful to, to his word. So for us as a group, we started growing, reading the words together. Um, the women would read the word at home and would come back together and share what the Lord had, you know, spoken to you or taught you as you read the scriptures. And we come together on Tuesday, I'd lead the group in taking them through the scriptures. And we were a very, very interactive group. And at first, of course, just with any group, you find just a few people are talking. But as we went along the way, 
there was more participation with the women. And I've always encouraged women to get into the word that you only get out as much as you put in. So if you're spending time in the scriptures, spending time with the Lord on your own, when you come, you will bring to the table what the Lord has brought for you. And when we come to Bible study, it's like a buffet. It's like a potluck. Everybody comes with what the Lord has, has shared with them, what the Lord has taught them. And together we get built up. So I've, I've always encouraged that. And I, I, and I believe that's been one of the strengths of the group because everybody's, um, whatever they have to share is valuable. Mm -hmm. It's not one person's opinion. It's not one person's, what they're learning from the Lord. It's what we are all learning from the Lord and we come together and we build one another. But, and, but Kakwe, you are, you are an inspiration. Um, I remember the very first time I met you, I thought you were glowing. You were, you were just so full of the Holy Spirit. It, it is inspirational and encouraging and motivating for us all. But it's it's become that group has become so much more than just the word, hasn't it? It's become a, a group of, of mutual support and support for um, in in the case of things like funerals and such. Um, absolute um, thoroughgoing Christian. It's just just like Jesus said. It, it's just loving one another, loving loving your neighbour. And and how many are you averaging now? We're averaging about from 35 to 40. Mm. Yeah. yeah. That's a so lot of women days. coming, isn't it? Yes, because That's... there's some Tuesdays where not everybody's there. But if everybody came on that one particular Tuesday, it would be about 40. So we're usually mm. about 30, 35. And we have mm. the beauty of the group is that it's made up of women from different backgrounds. Mm. We have women at different stages of life different ages, uh, different ethnic backgrounds. So we are we are a mixed bag and it's it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful to hear somebody share uh, from their cultural heritage of how yeah. you know the Lord is teaching them about a particular scripture and and you know uh, meshing it together with with their upbringing. And another person will talk about how the Lord talked to talk to them through this scripture. 40 years ago and they're now they're in their 80s and how it, it's it's amazing it's absolutely yeah. amazing i know it's, it's it is it is it's very moving to actually be a part of this and, and i do miss it yes and I, i'm hoping to come in september um maybe october um right this is so what you have just recently well about a year ago completed a master's degree in in Christian education from in Christian education so it's absolutely perfect for leading groups like this so how did that happen you, you say that the group had begun in 2018 was the was it the group that inspired the taking of the uh, course or vice versa so previously before this I had been uh, teaching uh, girls bible studies uh, I called it girls group in my home on Sunday afternoons and I learned a lot from the little minds, very, very curious, very, very curious. And they would ask me uh, questions like, like if I, I, if they asked me a question and I'd answer, and then they would ask why and why and why. So there were all these whys that I'd, I had to answer. And it, it made me um, ask the Lord to help me to be able to break down the scriptures to their level. So we used to learn scripture in a very fun way. We would compose songs. We'd do skits. We'd do all kinds of things. But it got to a point where I was leading the children's, uh, the, the young girls group. And then I was doing the Bible study as well. So one had to give. And I felt I'd brought the girls. I was teaching girls from age seven to about 14 to ninth grade. And so I felt it was time to let one go and the, and focus on one. So I focused on the women's Bible study. But then as well with the women's Bible study, as the women began to grow in, 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 in the, you know, spiritually and, and digging deeper into the word of God, started asking me questions which I really could not handle. And I said, Lord, if you're calling me to this, I would want to, I want to have a better handle of your word. I want to be skilled in handling your word. 
and and the way it is now, I bring what I get from my quiet time and I can only go so far. So that's how I decided to look for a Bible college and I went to uh, Dallas Theological Seminary. I enrolled there from 2020 and I graduated last year. So it was twofold. My going to DTS was twofold. One for my own growth, for my own spiritual growth and you know, getting deeper in the word. And secondly, to be able to help others, to come alongside with others, to help them in their spiritual growth. And uh, yeah. So you did very well with that, didn't you? You did. Uh, you did. And I know you you worked very hard because I know you pulled several all nighters to to get it to get it done. And then then they then you then they paid you to come to Dallas and to speak about it. Yes. Uh, no, they didn't. Well, they paid for your they paid your trip. No, 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 they didn't pay for my trip. Oh right. Okay. Yeah. So, so for Dallas. What happened was we were, we had a course, I had a course called Women Teaching Women. Mm -hmm. So from that course, they picked six people to come and um, give messages or bring a, uh, they have what is called a, semin a seminar, a seminar or workshop called God Talks. And this is just a, a platform to help um, women in ministry who are coming up in ministry to be able to uh, give them an opportunity to, in sort of, you'd say, a controlled environment within seminary, for you to give you an opportunity to be able to speak to an audience outside of your regular audience. So we, and I was one of the six that were picked. So we worked with our professors in developing our messages. And, you know, they gave us the ins and outs of what it will be like in the real world to be a speaker. And uh, they gave us a lot of feedback. The audience was mostly made up of students and they also gave us feedback. So it was a good, a good real practice. Yeah. I, I was part of the online audience for that. <laughs> I remember you talking about James, the book of James. Yes, yes. My message was on application. And that's another thing, Bobby, that uh, we emphasize in the Bible studies, the Tuesday Bible studies, application of the word of God. The word of God is not meant to be uh, taken as an academic exercise or just something that we absorb and we store. It's meant to transform our lives. So I emphasize application. We don't just read to be informed. It's not for information. It's for transformation. When we read God's word, we are interacting with the Holy God. We're interacting with, with the author of the scriptures, the Holy Spirit. And through that, he begins to work on us. It's not just us going through the Bible. It's the Bible, the word of God going through us and bringing change. Mm -hmm. So that's something that I, I always talk about. So that's why I think the, the ladies have embraced that and, and are really living it out. Because we see, I, I, I just see at the interactions. We just don't talk about loving God and loving one another. We have to do it. Now that we know, what are we doing about it? Mm. Yeah. yeah, yeah, absolutely. Application, application, mm. application. And um, I know that you have um, a, a trip coming up to England. So tell us, uh, tell us about that. So uh, sometime early this year, I traveled to, to the UK with uh, with my son he was he, to, in, to 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 europe he, he went for a soccer um camp in spain and then we passed through the uk as well so it took him to manchester to fulfill his lifelong dream of going to old trafford stadium and watching a match <laughs> <laughs> so while while sitting on on the tram on the way to the old trafford stadium my heart began to feel overwhelmed you know, just, just a certain sorrow washed over me. And I was, I was wondering, I said, God, what's going on? We, I'm supposed to be excited for my son going to watch this match. What's going on right now? I just felt a heaviness in my spirit. And I began to pray. I'd left my two daughters back in Canada. My husband had traveled to South Africa. So I was concerned that maybe something was going on with them. 
And so I prayed, pressed on a little bit more with the Lord and I wasn't getting anything. So I turned to look through the window and as the tram was passing, I was just looking at rooftops going by. And I felt the Holy Spirit speak to me about the spiritual state of the place I was in. And I prayed. I remember praying a silent prayer. I said, Lord, bring me back to the UK, not as a visitor and not as a tourist, but to proclaim your word and to bring encouragement to your people. And that's all I said. And I, I continued the trip the whole, you know, and, and came back here. And I remember telling the ladies, I said, you know, this is what I sensed when I was in the UK. When I was in Europe and in the UK, this is what I sensed. Um, and 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 I come back here and I, I, I don't know if it's just me or our circles or, or the church or whatever, but I seem to, exp there's, a, the, the, there's a certain sensitivity to the things of God, a certain level, which I, I did not experience on this trip, you know, where I went that awareness of God, that, that engaging with God, that um, there's a certain like coldness that I sensed. So I came back here. Well, while on that trip, I visited a, a niece of mine and she talked to me, she told, she reminded me of a girl I had discipled 20 years back when I was a student in Southampton. And she said, if this girl hears you were you were around and I didn't tell her, she'd be very upset with me. So she texted the girl and said, oh, guess who's here? And, and the girl said, I'm coming. So she came, we had wow. a chat. And uh, it so happened that she asked me what I was doing. So I said, well, I went back to school. And she says, you went back to school? I said, yeah, I went to Bible college and now I teach Bible study. She, the girl said, wow, you have not changed. <laughs> 20 years ago, all you used to talk about was, was the Bible. And I wondered, is she really a student at the University of Southampton or is she a Bible student or Bible teacher or something like that? So anyway, this girl is now married and she's married to a pastor. So mm -hmm. we chatted a little bit and I gave her a, a business card and she asked me if I'd, if I had anything that I could give her to read, which I'd written or any messages that I had, had recorded. So I gave her the one from Dallas, the application is everything. And she listened to it and she was so, I don't know, whatever, overwhelmed or the Lord spoke to her anyway. So her husband picked up my business card and asked her, who's this? So she began to tell him who I was. And and he he watched the um the video that I'd sent her. And he just looked at her and said, this is the speaker for our next conference. So I'd mm -hmm. never met him before. And he sent me a text and he said, I heard about you from my wife and would like to invite you to speak at our next women's conference. And mm. so that's how it happened. So for me now, in retrospect, I see it as the Holy Spirit was stirring my heart, giving me his burden in, on that tram on the, on the way to Old Trafford Stadium. And the Lord began to do his thing. He worked behind the scenes and brought these two things together. And that's how... I'm going. Yeah, wrapped up uh, for anybody that knows Britain, they would know that the Manchester tram is the complete opposite end of the country from mm -hmm. uh, Southampton, where you're going yeah. to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I think you're going for a weekend, is that correct? And you're going to do several things? Yes. Yeah, tell, okay. us, tell us about that. So, I'm what are you going to be doing? And the theme of the conference is reset, refocus, and rekindle. So, uh, Reset your minds and hearts. Refocus on your purpose and rekindle your passion for God. That's mm -hmm. basically, and, and I'm, I'm, it's all being anchored on Hebrews 12.1, where, where the, the, the author of Hebrews is, is telling them to run the race with endurance. Let us run the race with endurance that God has set before us. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, the author and perfecter of our faith. So that's basically what I'm what I'm going to talk about. I'm talking about staying fueled for, you know, in our faith walk. How do we stay fueled for the long haul? What uh 
how can we live in a way that we are uh, uh, flourishing or blossoming or in whatever season we're in, whatever we're going through, how can we grow from strength to strength and keep growing as a body? And, uh, and I'm going to talk about deepening our roots in God. And then I'm also going to talk about widening our wings. Two things here, deepening our roots through at, uh, uh, engaging in the word, prayer, community, fellowship with the Holy Spirit, fellowship with one another. And then I'm going to talk about widening our wings. Each one of us, Bobby, have been given gifts by God. Each one of us. Mm -hmm. the, Bible says, the Bible says so in, in, in Romans chapter 12, the 6 to 8, in 1 Peter 4.10, uh, Peter tells the church, each one of you should use the gift that God has given you to serve. So I want to talk about, I want to encourage the body of Christ to rise up and use the gifts that God has given us to build the body of Christ and to reach the lost. So that's basically in a nutshell. And, <laughs> and, and um, are you talking to groups of women or other groups at all? So I, I am talking in six sessions. And mm -hmm. I know that's a lot. So the first session is I'm talking to the leaders of the church. And I, I want to talk to them about leadership that transforms life. And I'm really, Bobby, I'm going to talk from my experience, from what I've seen God do. And, and I think the, the one, some of the biggest lessons for me as a leader is having a servant heart, having a teachable spirit loving the people you serve, having a passion for what you do, and most importantly, following the leadership of the Holy Spirit. That for me is what I've seen in my life. As I've done these things, I sit back and watch with joy as the Lord transforms, as he does his work and transforms my life and the life of those in my circle. So I'm going to talk about leadership, and, and those things that I see in my life with them on Friday night. And then I asked them if I could talk to young people. I am so passionate about young people because they are the next generation. They are the ones who are going to take over from us. So I'm going to meet with the, the young people on Saturday morning to be tea with Auntie Cabway. I mentor a lot of young people and um, I see their struggles. And, and when I was a young person in my 20s, in my teens, I had women who I used to look up to, women who mentored me. So I, the same, I, I want to pass on what was, what was given to me. So I'm meeting with the young people and I'm looking at, we're going to look at four areas. Where, so the, the whole theme is reset, refocus, and rekindle. And at the end of the conference, or at the end of the meetings, my prayer is that the Holy Spirit will ignite our passion for God and we'll run with it. So for the young people, I'm going to focus on faith, family, friendships, and future. Yeah. How can you run well in these four areas and finish strong as a young people, as a young person in each one of these? And that will be Saturday morning. Then the main women's conference, the whole reason for me being invited is on Saturday afternoon, going into early evening. And I, I would, uh, I have two sessions. So the first session is where I'll talk about deepening, strengthening our walk with God, deepening our roots in, in Christ. And then the second session is where I'll talk about uh, wired for wide wings. That's using our gifts, talents, abilities, and resources for the kingdom of God. Wired and for, what did you wired, say, what? Wired for wide wings. Wide wings? Yes, wide wings. Wonderful. We would not, when God created us, eh? uh, Ephesians 2.10 says, you are God's masterpiece, created anew in Christ Jesus to do the good works that he had prepared for you long ago. Mm -hmm. As children of God. And then 1 Corinthians uh, 12.7 says that uh, uh, the gifts are for the common good. They are for building the church. Okay? So, if a bird, if, if a bird's wings are broken or clipped, they can only go so far. 
And when God created us, he didn't create us just to, to exist in a little cocoon or on our own. We were meant to have wide wings that fly high and fly wide to impact the world around us and beyond. What mm -hmm. you and I probably do is sometimes we are so short-sighted, we think we're just sowing the word in the people that are in our care. But actually it goes far beyond us because they are going to take the word and sow it in other lives and in generations to come. And that's what God created us, that multipli uh, multiplication effect. I look at the women in the Bible study. Yes, we have now reached 40, but I believe that we are more than, more than 40 people are being impacted by what God is doing in our, in our midst. So yeah. we were wide for wide wings. So, so I, I see this trip, uh, this, this conference in the UK as it's a reminder. I'm going there to remind, there to remind and encourage. And encourage. I have I have quite a few um, of my um, followers are from the UK. So can you give us some dates and I will put in the in the chat if you give me afterwards. Not the chat. I will put in the information below the uh, below our chat um, how how they can sign up for, for this conference. Okay, I'm not sure if it's going to be online as well, but it's from Ju July 19th to the 21st. Mm -hmm. So the actual women's conference is on 20th July from 12.30 to 5 p.m. In Southampton, yes? Yes, in Southampton. And if yeah. they can travel, that will be great to see them. <laughs> right, I will get the details um, from you afterwards and, and I'll put them uh, underneath our, our message. Yeah. So looking at the, the future beyond this English trip, it's like it's all coming together and... and uh, you, you get yourself qualified in, in Christian education and now you are starting to be a, a person who is actually uh, implementing that. And, uh, well, for a while you've been implementing it on your home turf, but now you're moving beyond your home turf. And is that what you would like to do? What, well, how do you see the future? Bobby, I never saw this coming. Remember when I went to Bible college? I went to deepen my walk with God, to strengthen my walk with God, and to also just help the people that God had put in my care, my Bible study mm -hmm. group. Yeah. But obviously God had other ideas, had other plans. I remember when I was doing my internship at, at our church, Smite Street, uh, the pastor who was supervising me telling me, Cabway, you have tunnel vision, but your vision is not God's vision. Yeah. So buy into God's vision. He's bigger than your small vision. He's bigger than your, your little Bible study. And, um, and he kept on telling me, he says, I believe this is, this, is, this is your training ground. This is your launch pad. This is just something that God has brought to, to grow you. And he's going to um, send you places you never imagined. And I was listening to him, I said, that's not what I want. That's not my idea. So, so it's up, it's 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 entirely up to him. So when I finished uh, last year, when I graduated, I asked him before I graduated around March. I graduated in May. So around March, I was having a conversation with the Lord, and I said, "Okay, Lord, so I've come this far. I'm doing this degree, and what's next? You know. So, and I really wanted to know. You know, you get to a place where you want to know whether is this what God made me for? Is this what he wired me for? So I asked him, I said, Lord, why did you put me on this earth? Why is it that I'm so drawn? I'm so driven to just to your word. I just want to dig through your word and share it, whatever. I just want to share your word. I can't help myself. I go to bed thinking about that, wake up thinking about that. It just drives me. So I asked him, I said, God, why did you, what is the, the philosophy of my life, if according to you. And Bobby, all I heard was run. <laughs> I'm like, run. Okay, so I wrote the word run. I said, okay, Lord, I would like you to unpack this a little bit more. <laughs> yeah. And the next thing I heard was run well. I said, okay, you want me to run well? She said, yes, I, I, I created you to, to run well, but also to help others run well 
in their race. I said, okay, that makes sense. That's why I'm driven to this. And I really just want to see, I want to disciple. I want to see people grow. I want to see people get it. I want to see them stand on their, on their spiritual feet and, and run. I said, God, I get it. So I put run well. And then I, I was like, okay, Lord, so explain a bit more. Give me a little bit more meat. So one Tuesday morning after I'd finished teaching, one of the ladies from, from uh, the Bible study, an older lady I consider to be like my, 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 one of my moms, one of my mentors, she comes to me and, and she says to me, um, you know, she's in her 80s. So she says, decades ago, when I was probably in my 40s, I prayed, I prayed, I'd ask the Lord to, like, Lord, should you uh, enable me to live up to my maybe 60s, 70s, or in my later years, I ask that you place people in my path that will help me to finish strong. And the moment she said that, that the phrase finish strong, it just dropped in my spirit. Like, there you go. You were looking for a complete something. I've crafted you to help people run well and finish strong. And so Bobby, you're asking me, what, where, where is this going? What's the future like? God, I believe that this is, this is the philosophy of my life, to help people run well and finish strong in their Christian walk and in whatever assignment God brings their way. So whatever, wherever God sends me, that's the message. That's the message. That's the mission. That's the mission to help people run well and finish strong. Well, oh, Kevway, thank you. That's just lovely. Thank you. So we, yeah, thank you. Thank you for talking to us. Um, thank you. Um, just pray that everything will. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what to say. It's just, yeah. It, it, the first time I met you, you were glowing. And so you're still glowing. <laughs> it's just lovely to be around you. God bless you. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby.